this is a question from two, year 2011 uh, a question uh, a mixture of uh, equilibrium of force if equilibrium of objects and uh, friction mainly so we, we know now the system is at equilibrium system is at equilibrium means the system is at rest if the system is at rest we know according to newton's first law the resultant force acting on now each object is at rest according to the question uh, so according to newton's first law the resultant force acting on each object must be zero now moving on uh, let's see what they're asking in the question two identical wedges two identical wedges of that's an important thing two identical wedges so when the wedges are identical then whatever the forces acting on uh, the left one left wedge the same kind of forces will be acting on the right side same kind of forces it doesn't mean in the same direction and all but same kind of forces will be acting on uh, the right side wedge as well symmetrically therefore if you consider the equilibrium of one of these objects that's more than enough uh, each mass m are placed next to each other on a floor uh, floor a cube of mass capital m is placed on the wedges as shown in the figure Assume that there is no friction between the cube and the wedges. So there is no friction between the cube and the wedges. The coefficient of static friction between the wedges and the flow is mu. All right. The largest m that can be balanced without moving the wedges is given by. Right. So now you have kept. Uh, now whenever they say largest, smallest, maximum, minimum, then it means they are talking about a limiting condition. That is a limiting condition. It's a limiting condition. So. When they talk about limiting condition, then you can uh, say uh, friction is limiting frictional force. So limiting frictional force is acting on the object. Limiting frictional force is acting on the object. All right. So moving on, um, let me mark the forces acting on this object. Now we have to find the value for capital M. Now, if there's a system in equilibrium, then what you need to do is you have to consider equilibrium of each object uh, and balance the vertical forces and the horizontal forces. That's all. You will get the answer. It's not that hard. So I'll use a red color for, to mark the forces acting on capital M. There will be three forces acting on capital M, one being the weight of the object, which will be acting vertically downwards, and that will be capital MG. And capital M is in contact with simple M. Therefore, perpendicular to that, a force like this will act. And remember, this is a cube. Therefore, it will be the cross section is a square. It's a square cross section. And uh, there will be two forces acting like this on the object. So let's take these two forces as, um, let's say, uh, right, R1. And this is also, I, I'm going to mark R1. Or else, R, if I mark it as R2, it will be unnecessary. But let's say, OK, never mind. I'll mark it as R2. But you should not have a problem. Uh, it should be equal, R1 and R2 should be equal. You know why? Because look at the left side and right side. It's exactly the same. We have two identical wedges, same angle and everything is the same. Therefore, the object is also symmetric and uniform object. Therefore, R1 and R2 are going to be equal, definitely. And uh, now, on the other hand, this force has to be acting perpendicular like this now, to the surface. So the angle these two are going to create with the vertical, it's going to be uh what well, it's going to be definitely uh equal to 45 degrees it's going to be equal to 45 degrees because you know when you draw diagonals for a square that uh, diagonal will be at 90 degrees okay so this line mg will be bisecting that angle therefore this is 45 and this is 45 okay so i'll get it done here itself for the for capital m we know the horizontal force must be equal to, the horizontal forces must be balanced out so right force should be equal to left side force. What is the right side force here? That is R2 uh, sine 45. And what is the left side force? That is R1 sine 45. So sine 45 and sine 45 will get cancelled off. Therefore, R2 is equal to R1. This we didn't, we don't have to derive really. You can understand, you should be able to understand that uh, they are equal to each other because of the, of the symmetry of the system. If not, here we have the mathematical proof. All right. These two angles are definitely 40. There's no argument in that because the perpendicular reaction should be acting perpendicular to the surface. Therefore, this should be the diagonal. All right. And if you equate the vertical forces now, upward force should be equal to downward force. Upward forces are the upward or vertical components of R1 and R2. So look at the vertical component of R1. That will be R1 uh, uh, cos 45. 
whereas uh, the other one is R2 cos 45. And the force on the right side is going to be capital MG. And uh, now we know R1 and R2 are equal. Therefore, instead of R2, I will write, I will use R1 itself. All right, R1 itself because R1 and R2 are equal. Therefore, if I substitute R1 for R, R2, then it will be 2R1 cos 45 because they are equal. And that is equal to mg. We are supposed to find m, remember. Uh, right. So uh, finally, if 2R1 into cos 45 is 1 over root 2 equals to mg and uh, root 2R1 will be equal to mg. Now I need capital M. To find capital M, then I need to find out R1 because R1 is something we introduced. So if I know R1, I know M. All right, fine. Now let's move on. Moving on to the other part. Now let's move on to simple M here. Uh, for my convenience, I'll get rid of these angles because they are a little uh, crowded here. It looks this looks a little crowded. Uh, you have the um, you have the wedge on the right side. So same angle, same mass here, and I'll get rid of these points. Now let's mark the forces acting on this block. I'll use another color to indicate the forces acting on the wedge, actually, not the block, the wedge. Uh, according to Newton's third law, we know there will be an R2 like this acting on the wedge as well, because uh, wedge is exerting R2 on the block, the or cube. Therefore, the cube will be exerting R2 in the opposite direction on the wedge. Therefore, R2 will be acting on the wedge like this, R2. And uh, what are the other basic things? Uh, you know, the weight will be acting vertically downwards, weight of the wedge, mass is M. So MG will be acting downwards. And here, remember that this uh, wedge is in contact with the surface. So let's take that perpendicular reaction as maybe R3. All right, R3. That's, a, that's going to be a perpendicular reaction that is between the flow and the wedge, R3. Right. So I'm not going to consider the equilibrium of this uh, wedge because there's no point. It's the same type of forces which are going to act here as well. Uh, but uh, for your, okay, fine. And there's one more force. Now, when you take R1, um, when you take R1, R1 has components. I'll mark the components separately in another color, maybe, right? R1 has components, one horizontal one, and the other one is vertical. Right, fine. So what is this angle going to be? This angle. Now, this angle and this angle are equal, correct? So this angle is definitely 45. Therefore, this angle is also 45. Why is this angle 45? Because that is the diagonal of the cube. It's a square. So this is 90 bisected. So this is 45. Therefore, this is also 45. Okay, right. Um, and if you take the components of R2 now, R2, R2 is it here, it will be R2 cos 45. Whereas this is going to be R1, oh, sorry, R2 sine 45. Right. So, um, because of this R1, R2 cos 45, because of this R2 cos 45, the wedge will try to move to the left because there's a horizontal force towards left. So, to avoid that, to avoid that, the flow will apply a frictional force on the block in the opposite direction. So, the frictional force must be marked on the block in this direction. This is the frictional force. Remember the blue color forces are the forces acting on the wedge on the left side. This is the frictional force. And that frictional force should be FL. Why is it FL? Because they are asking for the largest capital M which can be kept at rest. So when, when they say largest, it's a limit. They are mentioning a limiting condition. Therefore, we can use limiting frictional force. The object is at the verge of slipping. So we can use the uh, force limiting frictional force. So these are the forces which are acting on the wedge. All right. So there is there are two, uh, actually three vertical forces. If you count R2 also as one of them, then uh, R2 also one of them, then uh, R2 sine 45 actually. R2 sine 45, MG and R3, they are the vertical forces. And FL and R2 cos 45, they are the horizontal forces. All right. Then what you need to do is you need to consider the equilibrium of the wedge. Right, so this is simple M. Then let us start for simple M. Uh, we know the horizontal force, right side force, should be equal to horizontal left side force. So, what is the horizontal right side force? That is equal to FL. And what is the horizontal force on the left side? That is actually R2 uh, cos 45. 
or to cos 45. Now, what is the equation for FL? FL is mu, it's given in the question, no need to worry about that. Mu R3, R3 is the perpendicular reaction between the flow and the wedge. So you have to use that R3 equals R2 cos 45. Now, from the previous equation, we can get a value for R1, is it? R1 is equal to mg divided by root 2. Therefore, I can substitute R1 and, uh, you know, R1 and R2 are equal. Huh? So if this is the value for R1, R2 also is mg divided by root 2. So let's substitute that value there. And I'll be getting uh, mg divided by root 2 into cos 45 is 1 over root 2. Therefore, mu R3, that is equal to mg divided by root 2 and root 2 multiplied, it will give you 2. Finally, R3 is equal to mg divided by 2 mu. This question is not that hard, people. It's just marking the forces correctly. And after that, take horizontal component, vertical component, and balance them out. That's it. I have done that to the cube. Now I'm doing that to the wedge. So I'm done with uh, equating the horizontal components. Now let's uh, finish it off. For simple length, the wedge, let's apply the, consider the vertical equilibrium. So when you take vertical forces, um, here, uh, F upwards should be equal to F downwards. So look closely and uh, find out what are the upward forces acting. R3 is acting upwards. And that's all, is it? Only R3 is acting upwards. And downward forces, simple mg plus uh, R2 sine 45. R2 sine 45. Right. So for R3, we have already found the value that is mg, capital MG divided by 2 mu. And simple mg, I leave, is, uh, leave it as it is. And for R2, again, we can use the equation capital mg divided by root 2 into what is sine 45? 1 over root 2. Hope you all are clear with this. Right. And um, yep, that's it. We are almost there. We are almost there. Uh, from all these equations, is simple g is common, na? mg. So m, m, uh, simple g, simple g can be cancelled out. And uh, so what are the final touches? Uh, capital M divided by 2 root mu, so sorry, 2 mu equals simple M plus, simple M plus, here we have capital M divided by root 2 into root 2, that is capital M by 2. Don't forget what you are supposed to find out. We are supposed to find out who? Uh, capital M, the value of capital M. Right, so if you move on, I'll continue here. Uh, I'll take capital M, all capital M's to one side, that is uh, capital M divided by 2 mu minus capital M over 2 equals to simple M. Let's take capital M out. And what will I be getting in down? 1 over 2 mu minus 1 over 2 equals to simple M. Then uh, I will do something here, see if you can understand. I'm going to take 2 mu as the common LC, uh, at least uh, I mean common multiple, so uh, common denominator really, 2 mu. Then on top, I will be getting 1 minus mu. equals to simple m. And the final answer will be this 2 mu goes up, 1 minus mu comes down, capital M is equal to 2 mu simple m divided by 1 minus. That will be the final answer. And where do we have the final answer? It's the third one. Third one will be the final answer. 